No one felt worse after workouts. So you can only feel better. Hi everyone, my name is Alawagam. I'm a yoga teacher here in Dubai since more than 10 years. I specialize myself into biomechanics and recovery. And I'm very happy to be here at Astor Clinic today with Dr. Ambika Nambiar. Hi, Dr. Hi, how are hi you? everyone. I'm good. Thank you for that sweet introduction. How Thank are you, you doing? So much. Uh, I'm so happy uh, to be with uh, you today. You know, yeah. we had this conversation already before the podcast. Yeah. As two uh, enthusiasts of fitness, Correct. biomechanic Correct. and uh, anatomical uh, performance, uh, I'm very excited to know more about uh, recovery and more excited to know about how the body works and how can we uh, help people to overcome soreness. What's DOME and uh, how does it work? Yeah, so basically DOMS is delayed onset muscle soreness. Mm -hmm. Now, I think everybody's been through that cycle where, you know, you've gone to the gym, you've had a long leg day or you've, you know you've really had like a power yoga session mm -hmm. and you come back home and you're feeling a little okay, but the next morning you're unable to get out of bed. Like you just feel like everything is drop dead heavy you can't move your arms you can't move your legs and the whole point of going to the gym was to feel more fit and you end up feeling more tired than ever so that is something that i think when on our journey as fit fitness enthusiasts that's something that we all encounter at least once so doms is essentially it's not just where your muscles are sore okay. what happens is that the muscle undergoes micro tears so they're just mm -hmm. they're not they're microscopic tears you can't really see them even on okay. an mri scan and so forth mm -hmm. and you have it at various parts now what triggers it, if you ask me, uh, on a technicality, they're eccentrically loading exercises, okay. such as when you curl, mm -hmm. you uh, when you're curling your arm, mm -hmm. that that doesn't trigger off a DOMS. But when you do that in a slow motion, opposite to the action of the muscle, you're stretching out, you're lengthening out the muscle fibers. That time, if the weights are a little more, you're trying, you know, extra weights on that day and so mm -hmm. forth. That time, what happens is that the muscle can tear. And right. that leads to DOMS. So DOMS is essentially something that presents 48 to 72 hours mm -hmm. after a good workout session. And you, your main complaints are fatigue. You feel tired. You feel like your muscles are heavy. You feel like there's a lot of pain. And you don't know when to work out next. You don't know how to go about it. You don't know whether you need actual painkillers for it or you know how to go about it. Basically, that's DOMS. So it's basically scar tissues on any connective tissues, like yeah, muscle, yeah. fascia, tendons, ligaments. What correct, can it happen correct, exactly? Correct. More than scar tissue, it's an acute tear. So there is mm -hmm. inflammation going on. Okay. Now, if you ask me, because the word around a lot mm -hmm. and you know people don't really know what inflammation is okay. like I take a pen and I stab myself mm -hmm. so there's blood flowing for about 30 seconds and right. then after that the blood stops mm -hmm. but for two or three days the entire area there will be some redness it will be a little sore Perfect. it'll be yeah. painful mm -hmm. if I poke at it it's mm -hmm. not going to heal but I let it out it's going to dry in three days and it's just going to be like it never existed mm -hmm. that's inflammation now imagine that that's happening inside your body inside okay. a joint on the muscle on the ligament or the fascia like you said in one of those areas, when this inflammation occurs, mm -hmm. Here, I poke at it, it doesn't heal. There, I keep moving it. You know, mm -hmm. I need to reach out for a glass of water. I'm moving my hand. So there's no place for the inflammation to go. It's just loitering around there and creating and triggering off more inflammation. So that eventually leads to a lot of buildup of, you know, like lactic acid, byproducts, mm -hmm. things that substance P, basically things that causes pain. Mm -hmm. So the point is, when you have DOMS, there should be a good balance between resting it up so moving it around. Yeah, it, it sounds a bit like a dilemma because uh, you have some scar tissues and domes, so uh, you don't want to overuse your body because you want to give some time to rest right, for the connective right. tissue. But at the same time, if you give too much time to rest, then you will stop the blood flow. So correct, the natural correct. healing process. Yeah. So what, what can you recommend? So once you've recognized that your, your body is going through something through DOMS, it doesn't have to be the entire body. It could be just your right arm or it could mm -hmm. be just both your legs, which you've worked out. And what happens is that you need to first recognize this, then you need to start working towards it. So yes, like you said, hydration for the blood flow to go on is essentially very, very, very important. So you number have one, to, you will say the, the hydration. Yes, so drink absolutely. A lot, of water. a lot of water because you need all those metabolites to be constantly washed out mm -hmm. within your body. So what hydration do, is key. What do you think about, um, is it just water or do you recommend any type of electrolytes or any supplement that can be... 
to be honest i am not very into a lot of supplements and mm-hmm. external i think our body gets what we want from what we want from the nutrition that we have like from I the see. food that we eat mm-hmm. so you don't technically need electrolytes or like an ors for mm-hmm. treating doms particularly okay. so i would suggest just water and if possible coconut water i think that has all the mm-hmm. nutrients and it's a natural source so you don't have to yeah, you know go anywhere else and, yeah. yeah it's 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 an excellent source of nutrition so how many liters <laughs> see i think there's that's an age old debate right you have people who say 3 liters and 8 glasses of water mm-hmm. so i think uh, what you need to essentially you need to feel a little fresh so i okay. personally feel that i drink a lot of water just before a workout mm-hmm. by a lot i mean like at least like a tall glass say around somewhere between mm-hmm. 250 to 300 ml okay. and once i i don't drink water i take sips of water during a workout yes, yeah. and out is mm-hmm. over i like to give myself like a cold bath so before and after yes before mm-hmm. and after so after the workout again i don't immediately drink water i give mm-hmm. myself a cold bath even okay. though it's not as comforting as you know going into the sauna mm-hmm. i give myself a cold bath because coming to the point number 2 ice and cold baths mm-hmm. really help with the inflammation, the inflammation yeah, yeah they reduce the inflammation and they mm-hmm. also help in healing of these small tears right. so i think you've seen i think we've all seen all these celebrities immersing themselves into these ice baths yeah, these it's, days yeah it's a new trend i mean this i know it's a new fad yeah, i think people yeah. love shooting it that way so yeah. i don't think you i think that's quite painful so yeah, that's that's easy. that's not easy that's not easy <laughs> especially after you're really tired after a workout but yeah a lot of uh, celebrities are endorsing it mm-hmm. and it does work yeah the Uh, mm-hmm. science behind it does work but i don't think you need to put yourself through that mm-hmm. i think just a nice cold shower will do at this point yeah, yeah. yeah. so after the shower maybe hydrate yourself again okay. like you know you that is a point of time where you can have like coconut water or mm-hmm. some you know something to some electrolytes if you prefer mm-hmm. it that way uh, maybe about 500 ml of that or so okay. so i think that will be good for us but a foam roller works wonders for doms because it you know releases out the inflammation yeah. and it helps you know disperse it out for lots of very accurate work. you can actually trigger uh, the lactic acid the nuts or whatever uh, you know like uh, like inflammation that you feel correct correct and that's yeah because We remind you how the muscle works. Mm-hmm. You want to be able to create some space for uh, the natural uh, cardiovascularization, for the blood flow to come uh, to the injury and bring the nutrients that the body needs to recover. Correct, and then correct. get the muscle eventually stronger than. Correct, than correct, than absolutely. So you're right because you know, like like how you were explaining about the muscles, mm-hmm. they're they're quite. they're quite contracted after mm-hmm. a workout you know after a good workout you've stretched it out and now they're back in their state of natural contraction so a foam roller basically stretches that out and helps in you know a faster recovery Definitely. so that comes to i think our fourth point where i think for treating doms mm-hmm. uh, many of us or many people generally wonder what do you do next like can i go back to the gym or what do i do like you know do i just rest it out that that's a very good question i think I know. a lot of people want to know yeah so i think uh, no you can't rest it out even though that's the thing to do i guess i think what you should do is instead of then again focusing on like a high intensity training or like an mm-hmm. hiit or going for some you know really loaded exercises mm-hmm. maybe go for like a good brisk jog or like mm-hmm. a light amount of swimming swimming is one of the best yeah, exercises really good, yeah, yeah because mm-hmm. you have a lot of isometrics happening because your body weight is not coming on mm-hmm. and at the same time you're mobilizing all parts of your body and you have resistance so exactly, it's good for joints exactly. as well yeah I love your answer because a lot of people, especially uh, professional, they will actually recommend a good period of rest, which I think is important. But if you can manage to rest and have some slight stretch yeah. and reopening, you know, the zones, the area, not just where you feel the injury, but yeah. globally, just to yes, make sure that yes, everything yes. is flowing, I guess that's a key of recovery. And this is what also advise. Uh, I have a lot of athletes, professional football players. Uh, so they are that they, they, they're followed by um, uh, like physiotherapists right. and like osteopath uh, but they're missing sometimes this self stretching they like to get the stretch from a, a third person correct, you know, like correct. a third party but it's very important to understand that you are the best person that can fix yourself so that's why i love true. with yoga you know you, you you learn how to fix yourself before injury so to avoid injury if the injury happen you know yeah. so to recover and then to make sure that your muscles and your body overall get stronger after the injury absolutely i think i think i think yoga is you guys amazing because it not just i know this might sound a little fuzzy but it heals your mind as well you know there is a lot not mentioning of that, yeah, yeah because it heals well. your mind and it heals your body so i think that is also extremely important to stay fit you need mm-hmm. to have 
a clear mind, right? It just does not matter what you're doing with your body alone, physically and mm-hmm. mentally. There needs to be some amount of healing. Yeah, and and the, and as the meaning of of uh, yoga, it's unity. So you want to connect soul, mind, and body together. Correct. So uh, do we want to talk a little bit about the trauma? You know, the post injury. So. I think it's essential that we also recognize that while we are talking about DOMS, which mm-hmm. is essentially like a very, it's different from soreness because there are micro tears, but mm-hmm. essentially presents the same way. I we see. also need to take a moment and realize where we have gone through an injury. Mm-hmm. Now, an injury where you have had an actual tear, where, you know, probably like at the muscle insertion mm-hmm. or like, you know, a ligament tear, that's not going to recover. Mm-hmm. With DOMS, you are going to recover in say about five days or so. You're going to start feeling back to normal but with an actual injury mm-hmm. you're going to not feel the same way you're still going to have that pain you're still mm-hmm. going to feel the amount of stress onto your joints when you load it during the exercise mm-hmm. and it just persists i think that's very crucial because mm-hmm. a lot of athletes a lot of yes they push themselves with doms and eventually lead to an injury I so see. you need to know where to put the brakes on yourself. You need to gi- answer to the cues that your body is giving you. Mm-hmm. So I think that forms a crucial part. You have to recognize the injury and you have to at the same time take rest when necessary and know when to consult in with, you know, your your physician or your doctor who you're comfortable with. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the point, you know. It's all about balance. So once you identify the domes, you you give it a couple of days, maybe Correct. Increase uh, the input of water, maybe stretching, maybe correct, from roll, correct. some cold bath. But if you feel that this is not helping on the long term, it's, it's always good to have a professional uh, advice so you, you make sure that this doesn't get worse to the point Absolutely. that yeah. we'll have to go to the surgery yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's better that you don't push yourself where there's no point of return without an actual intervention. Mm-hmm. And you know, you can probably get help in the form of like you know, muscle relaxants and some painkillers mm-hmm. and some physiotherapy to treat your actual injury mm-hmm. whereas DOMS doesn't actually rec- really need any of those things mm-hmm. yeah, that's very interesting right. that's amazing and I think yeah the connection and the self-awareness will be a key as well absolutely and this is what I emphasize also with uh, the athletes and the athletes are a very good example we, we, we discuss uh, like about it before uh, because they have to maintain the level of fitness so injury Correct. for them is a drama yeah. So if they are able to feel it before it gets into an actual injury, then they will save a lot of hours of training and recovery, absolutely. and then they can, you know, keep the highest level of uh, of performance. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's really fascinating. And uh, like, I'm happy we have this conversation because on a personal level, uh, when I was like uh, on my training phase, I was doing a lot of calisthenics. Okay. Especially to prepare uh, all the inversions, all the handstands. So I was suffering from so much pain, especially on my right arm. Right. It was a mix of uh, joint inflammation, a mm-hmm. uh, mix of maybe some nerve who gets stuck, maybe the the um, neck, shoulder, yeah. disc. You see, a mix of everything. Yeah, yeah. And this is very, uh, very stressful in terms of mental health um, weight because you, you basically are frustrating. And the frustration that you feel when you get an injury after another, after another, and then you have to slow down your training you know yeah. this is something that we we really really have to speak about correct, and correct. i'll take your advice on that and i'll tell you what i did to <laughs> to fix it sure sure i i know what you're talking about because um i mean i i love working out and you know getting fit but i think my brother he's He's on a whole another level of, you know, trying to beef it up and, you know, get some muscle strength and all that. So he comes and, you know, usually he's presenting symptoms or he comes and calls me up and he says, you know, I do this and then I pull back and then it hurts. And my solution is don't pull back. <laughs> like that's all that I keep telling him. Don't do that. It won't hurt. But on a more serious note, yeah, what happens is, uh, like you said, the body, we can't consider it to be one unit. Like, we can't consider it to be separate, you know, functioning units. Mm-hmm. It's one unit. Mm-hmm. So, when you have a shoulder and a neck problem, there is the disc involved, there is a nerve involved, there are muscles involved. Mm-hmm. So, we need to, what I keep telling, you know, fitness enthusiasts, my brother, and people who do work out, my patients who come to me who, are, you know, are regular frequenters at the gym, I tell them that you need, you know, when you're working out at the gym, you know that there is that point. Mm-hmm. If you cross this, there is a possibility that you have 
an injury after this mm-hmm. don't cross that point that day you always have tomorrow because what you're doing in the gym in the long run is you are actually building the muscle mm-hmm. you are building it at at its core you're working on its fibers to become more stronger mm-hmm. so you need to give it time do not push yourself everybody thinks that there is no pain no gain which is what i think people you know keep yeah. telling themselves and all that you know i for you know when i have an injury or like i experience doms quite frequently i like you were talking about the mental block it's hard to get up the next day mm-hmm. and go back to the gym because mm-hmm. you're so tired and it hurts so badly so just to get that gentle stretch in just to get like a brief 20 minutes at the treadmill it's hard mm-hmm. so i listen to rocky okay balboa <laughs> silva sestelon song works all the time for me i think i don't know i just you know the pitch hits high i'm like yeah, i got to do motivation. this yeah yeah i think that works yeah i mean in uh, in my case the frustration was like especially when you're a teacher and you 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 have to demonstrate all the time Absolutely. so i work with my body so an injury for me means uh, a lot of uh, time out of correct, the grade correct. you know so if i can give one advice to people uh, when they experience those injuries is to focus more uh, on isometric training uh isometric will means like holding the posture rather than uh isotonic that mean moving, moving you know yeah. so yeah. when you move and especially when you have injury uh you can always get more from another joint or from another body part correct, correct. so when you hold you still building this muscle tension and this muscle strength that you actually need but without taking uh, an open risk of making it worse. Correct, correct. So Absolutely. that was one of my main thing. This is how I recover actually. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to stop working out because you know how it is, yeah. you know. Sacrifice your nutrition, hours in the gym, and then you get injury. Yeah. And you start getting weight, then you lose your muscles, then I you know, get depressed, then you get tired. I know. My advice um, to the people who are watching this like try to work around your injury and yeah. isometric training will be the best option i believe absolutely absolutely yeah i think that's a great way because isometrics you're still tr- you know strengthening and you know you're still training at your core i think mm-hmm. just to make it simpler for people who are watching an isometric is essentially when you're not stretching out your muscles mm-hmm. you're not stretching out the fibers for an example you want to work on your quads mm-hmm. there are so many ways to work on your quads mm-hmm. like you have you know all your like extensions and curls and weights and all that mm-hmm. an isometric form of a quads is when you keep your legs straight okay. you just roll a towel put it under your knee and mm-hmm. then just press down press that's down, it yeah, yeah. that way you are actually strengthening all you need to know is how long can you sustain it because mm-hmm. you keep the pressure down count till 5 and release it when it f- five becomes too easy make it 10 mm-hmm. and keep doing reps of that that you're itself is exactly exactly i mean few example of isometric the plank i guess oh, is the, yeah. the, the the gorgeous example it's one of the hard. best yeah keep your 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 abdominal belt and gauge yeah, yeah. your back strengths uh, the chair in yoga Yeah. Kasana, uh, holding this is a Thai burner, a quad burner, one of the <laughs> hardest. Yeah. Uh, I give you a little uh, tips. When it burns, it's isometric. <laughs> 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 When well, the person that you you hold and is burning, you you're on the right path. <laughs> we say in yoga, we avoid what we need the most. Yeah. See, avoid the abs. <laughs> and push up for a long time and this was like the key of my training as soon as i started focusing on that then uh, it was a game changer really my right. practice become so much amplified and so much stronger right right so i have a question uh, as a surgeon and an orthopedic expert what's your your soreness survival kit what what you have with you all the time and what help oh. you to okay so um pain. yeah the foam roller that mm-hmm. really helps mm-hmm. i take it to the gym when i go to when i hit the gym i take it because after a good workout it's mm-hmm. essential for me to stretch out my joints my muscles mm-hmm. put key points and trigger pressure activators and all that and make sure that you know i get in a good stretch mm-hmm. so if i've done a leg day i make sure that starting from my glutes till mm-hmm. my you know hamstrings and my gastroc sole mm-hmm. i make sure that i stretch it all out Very even nice. if it's an upper body workout i make sure that you know i'm doing gentle foam rolling mm-hmm. Maybe Maybe the second thing is like um, an ice pack. It really helps. Okay. Okay. Just take those silicone things, put it in the freezer, mm-hmm. and then you know carry it when you go to the gym, mm-hmm. and make sure you keep giving some cooling off to your joints to reduce the inflammation. Yes, mm-hmm. because that. it is essential you start doing it immediately post workout mm-hmm. you don't have to really wait for a injury to set in before you start using ice packs 
then i think a good you know cold shower of a people who prefer a hot sauna that will also work actually mm -hmm. but i ask me it's a cold you know a cold bath mm. and um if i'm going back home and i want to sit in the tub for a while maybe some epsom salts so in my kit would probably contain like the foam roller an ice pack and some epsom salts Very that's good. about it yeah that's yeah that what sounds about right you? Uh, uh, i think my yoga mat will be the number one thing i carry yeah because I, as soon as i feel little uh, stress a little sore a little tight i stretch right away yeah. the water bottle I can use that as a formal as well. Yeah. This is uh, make sure I have water. That's a very smart time. idea. Yeah, I, I actually like using like like I'm baking, you know, <laughs> I'm baking my my quads and yeah. having some pressure. And uh, I guess sleeping, like working on your sleeping pattern, will be one of the best hacks. Of course, hack. of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. I think a lot of people now with phones and everything, the hours have come down, and people mm -hmm. don't really realize that you're sitting at you're at home, you're going to sleep, mm -hmm. you have your phone whipped out, you just think you're going to scroll Fraction. on the gram for like ten uh, minutes, ten minutes sleep. becomes an hour, an hour becomes two. So I think yeah, sleep is essential yeah, for recovery. Yeah. It is very, very essential. Very important. All right, there's something also I want to uh, speak about. You know, is like uh, I'm getting older. You know, and I started yoga 10 years ago, so I was on my uh, mid-30, you yeah. know. Uh, so here's the question. We really feel that as we're getting older, uh, the inflammation on the joint and maybe the soreness can increase. What do you think as an expert? Is it is it true or can we kind of manage it by doing some more physical activities? Yeah, absolutely. See, you're right. There are a lot of people out there who probably want to get into a fitness journey, mm -hmm. but they don't know where to begin. And, you know, they don't find the time. And, you know, there are a hundred reasons why they don't want to exercise, but mm -hmm. maybe they really in their minds, they want to, but they don't mm -hmm. physically, it doesn't physically translate out. To all of those people are watching out there, I would be like, just, just get a Get a 10 minute break and do spot walking. Just Nothing get else. into it. Just start. <laughs> Just try. <laughs> Just try. Like, you know, don't do much. Like, you know, you brush your teeth and if breakfast is being made or you're going to make breakfast, uh, put on that YouTube channel, do that 10 minute walk. That's all that it takes. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you. I know a lot of men and women who are very passionate about their cars mm -hmm. and they all take their cars to service on time. Yeah, yeah. So your body <laughs> is your vehicle that is going to transport you from birth to death. So take unless service. you service it, <laughs> it's not going to work. So I think it's essential that you get into any activity, an activity of your choice. Mm -hmm. Get a group of friends together, go play badminton or, you know, you've always wanted to you know, learn how to do salsa, go join that class, you know. Zumba, my wife's Zumba. in Zumba now. Oh, lovely. So I think, I think just doing something and if nothing works, like I said, there are so many of these 10 minute, you know, walking challenges on YouTube. Switch that on. Yeah, there's literally no excuses. It's yeah. not like, you know, back in the days, we don't know what to do. Now exactly. we know, we have access to what to do. And we have excess and of information now. <laughs> yeah, you have to filter actually. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, basically just try, dress something that makes you happy. I guess it's the most important also correct, related correct. to mental health. You of know? course, of course. Otherwise it's not really sustainable. You know, you of course, of course. It. Like to answer your question, yes, when you do get older, your muscles get worn out faster, the inflammation mm -hmm. kicks in faster. Mm -hmm. But you can always keep mobilizing it. You need to mm -hmm. keep moving. And that will definitely, you know, make sure that your injury period is smaller, your recovery is smaller, mm -hmm. the period is shorter, and you're back to, you know, moving around. Yeah, yeah. I, I see that as an investment. Investment of money, investment of, of time. Because whatever the time you're going to spend to do some physical practice now will extend your life. Of course. That longevity. Of course. So uh, what's the point to live a very long life if you end up in a wheelchair or you end up with so much injury so it's make sure that you want to maintain your biomechanics your Correct. cognitive tissues Absolutely. your muscle your kinetic chain yoga is a great way to start but there is a lot of different physical Absolutely. activities so it's not too late to start i think there's room for everyone in yoga that's for uh -huh. sure Okay, and the great thing of being here together today is like we can actually uh, join forces to offer some uh, workout routine that people can actually start uh, doing, you know. Yeah. Um, so what will be the best thing for you? What do you want to associate in terms of warm up, the actual workout and maybe cool down? I feel like I'm out of my space here because you're the expert here. But yeah, as a, you know, as... As somebody who just works out occasionally and who just loves being fit mm -hmm. in general, I think for me, I 
I find walking almost meditative. Okay. So I think, good. yeah, as a part of my warm up, I mm-hmm. make sure that I get in a little bit of cardio. Mm-hmm. So I start off on a low pace and then I in- increase my incline mm-hmm. and the pace a little bit towards the end. So a solid 12 minutes of a brisk walk. That's yeah. my, you know, go to warm up. Yeah, I agree 100% because see, uh, before warming up the muscle, you want to warm up also the cardiovascular system. So right. make sure that the veins and the arteries can support uh, the new uh, flow of blood. So yeah, so you we can advise 10 to 12 minutes walking, yeah. then maybe increasing the speed, turning almost into a footing yeah. or running. Yeah. Um, I like to advise to mix isometric and isotonic. Yeah. So movement, maybe like pull-ups, oh. push-ups. Yeah. Dips, it doesn't need to be crazy. You can uh, use your body weight. I guess this is one of the, the best uh, way to train. Uh, and also hold, hold and breathe yeah. by um, creating, you know, an iso, uh, isometric. So holding a posture, holding a plank, holding a chair, making sure that you breathe. So you provide a, a good amount of oxygen, increasing yeah. the saturation, avoiding injury so that will reinforce both your biomechanics or so your, your skeleton yeah. and also your connective tissues right um what is your favorite work that i think i'm gonna get a lot of hate in the comments for this but i think the burpees i think burpees. they move everything Everyone i hate, hate it, it but it moves everything so maybe a good you know three reps of burpees five rounds each Ten. And, oh, <laughs> <Make it> ten. <laughs> that's criminal. No, you can start with three, then five, then seven. It's also <laughs> important to increase. As, yeah, it as is. You it is. It is. So it you is. can evolve as well. Yeah, everyone hates burpees. But burpees <laughs> is one of the best, definitely. It is. Remember. It is. The body avoid what it needs the most. So yeah. don't listen to um, the the lazy the lazy voice inside <laughs> the head and get yourself to to work. Absolutely. Um, so I think we have a pretty good program. Now, what about yeah. the, the the recovery part or the cool down part? What do you recommend? I think, like I mentioned before, the foam you know the foam roller mm-hmm. and a couple of stretches with that and. I might be wrong, you can correct me, but Mm. I also like walking towards the end of my workout. Mm -hmm. Like I do about five to eight minutes of just slow paced walking, just Mm -hmm. because, you know, your body is generated so much of heat. You've worked out so much. You need that energy to dissipate naturally as well. So you need to be moving. You need to constantly move and get Mm -hmm. that pace down, get your heart rate back to normal, get all those excess muscles to, you know, come back to its contractile position. Mm -hmm. So a good walk, maybe, you know, just a, at like a to be technical on a treadmill speed of like mm-hmm. five or four mm-hmm. just for about eight minutes or so that's about it so i cool down with a good after the foam rolling i do a walk for about eight minutes and that's about it no one felt worse after workouts so you can only feel better that's true that's true all right so this amazing conversation is coming to an end thank you so much doctor for all thank you. Uh, thank your you so insights much. Uh, I hope this conversation uh, was um, uh, inspirational for people who are watching the video. Uh, I guess what we want to keep in mind is that don't let the soreness uh, stop your physical activities. Absolutely. Because it will impact uh, your health, your mental health, and your progression. So instead of stopping everything, make sure that you find ways to work around it yeah, yeah. Uh, with all the tips that uh, we share with you today, guys. And uh, of course, um, as, as an expert, I, I, I hope I will not see you in a clinic. Oh, I hope reason. so, no. <laughs> I do hope to meet you at a yoga exactly. session. You, you, you're more than welcome to join any of the yeah, yoga Yeah, I would sessions. love to. I would love to. Uh, but we're so happy to have uh, experts like you who are here to fix uh, if, however, the injury happened. And correct, so we correct. can carry on our journey, um, our wellness and well You would like to add... Um, the last words? I think, yeah, I think it's uh, crucial that you identify, you know, when your soreness sets in, make sure that you're mobilizing during that point, mm-hmm. moving around, trying to get, you know, like how you said, overcome it. But also it's essential to identify when you have an injury and probably consult like a healthcare professional mm-hmm. when you have to. For but that. yeah, start your journey, start mm-hmm. your fitness journey. Yeah. It's not too late. And, you know, there is no tomorrow. You've got to do it now. And there's no excuses. There's no excuses. There's no good excuses. Yeah. <laughs> Not to start, guys. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much.